This is City of Steel for Violin 1. I'm going to talk through a couple of things and then I'll play through the entire piece for you. For this one, we have a lot of dynamic changes. So make sure, especially on the E string, for lighter dynamics, stay a little bit higher in your bow, closer to the fingerboard, but use a lot of bow so that the sound is clear. If you use too little bow on the E string, it's going to jump and bounce and crack and it won't sound very clear. Um, for any of these dynamics, when we have mezzo fortes, fortes, make sure you're really closing, pushing close to your bridge so we can hear those dynamic changes clearly. Watch our key signature. Since we have F sharp, C sharp, make sure if we're down on our G string, any of those C's are now C sharp and we need to make sure we're playing high three or a low four. In, I'm going to go through a couple little sections for the fingers I want you to use. So starting in measure 17. We have C sharps throughout this section. However, we also have that low two that we're going to need for the B flat measure 18. So in measure 17, we're going to start F sharp on the tape. Now I'm going to cross over for that C sharp, but instead of a three, I'm going to use my low four so that my second finger can easily reach that low two. Then I'm gonna use that low four coming back up. Now I'm on measure 19. After this F sharp, this time I'm gonna use my high three, just cause my second finger is now up on the tape, so it makes it a little bit easier to reach. Four. The next section that we need to look at is the eighth note slurs starting in measure 37. So these slurs, especially once we're closer to tempo, are going to go very fast. It doesn't, it's not going to sound great. It'll be too hard to play. It won't be clear if we try to do the string crossing. We won't be able to keep them even. We won't be able to keep them soft. So in measure 37, we're going to jump up to third position first finger on that third tape and then in measure 37 and 38 I have it as an like extended three just because I want to make sure from that first finger second on the tape then a whole step to the third so it'll be one three one three you can see the two whole steps right there and there in measure 39 we're gonna shift our first finger back a half step so now it's gonna be on the second tape for F sharp and you can see that X3 again. Now your third finger is gonna be a half step above this fourth finger tape, the A sharp. Make sure it's not on the tape or that's an A, you want the A sharp. In measure 40, that third finger, you see I wrote an arrow down over it. You're gonna just shift that third finger back to the tape because now it's an A natural. First finger is still on the F sharp and now the next note is a C sharp. So the second finger will land between the two tapes where our high three would normally be. So in measure 40, again, you're gonna have third finger, first, second, and then we're gonna go back to first position. And then in the next measure at 41, we shift up again and we repeat that pattern. One, three, one, three, one, three. Measure 42, one, three, one, three, one, three. Just watch your spacing. In measure 43, we shift back a half step. One, three, one, three, one, three. And then third finger slides back one, three, one, two, and then back in first position. In measure 45, it looks like we're repeating the pattern. And we are for the first two measures. We slide back a half step. But now measure 48 is a little bit different of a pattern. You're going to start by again sliding that third finger back on the tape. First finger is on F sharp, but now we have a B, so we're going to jump to first position on the A string and play the rest of these notes in first position. And then at 49, we play the pattern that we had played before. And then once we move to first position, we will stay there for a while. Just watch your dynamic changes. At measure 117, you have that same low four, high three pattern for our C sharp. And then at the end of 120, jump back to 41, play through to where you see the marking for Dakota at the end of 64 and then we jump to the end at the coda. 
In the coda, you will now join in on those 16th notes that you've been hearing in the second violin and violas. Um, it is mezzo forte to forte to fortissimo. Um, staying close to like balance point to middle is gonna make the string crossings easier. Practice these slowly, making sure you have your bow set correctly, set all your fingers in place for the whole measure, and then the best way is just to work it up to speed with a metronome.